Twitter revokes a major misinformation policy, a defiant blow in the name of freedom of speech. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is another declaration of truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. Twitter seems to have revoked its medical misinformation policy concerning the virus that shall remain nameless as of yesterday morning. The formal announcement actually dates to last week, but until yesterday, the policy itself remained visible. Now, the link to it bounces back to the Help Center page. Did Elon Musk order this revocation just to spite Apple after they threatened to disallow the Twitter app from their app store? Or has Elon Musk come to believe that not only are lockdowns not in keeping with American liberty, but that the narrative that policy clearly supported deserves a critical second look. Before I answer, or at least try to, I do want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views. Link in the description. Be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom of that link. Lots of great merchandise there, especially this t-shirt that I have chosen for today which depicts the three monkeys that hear no evil, see no evil, and speak no evil because they are respectively earmuffed, blindfolded, or gagged with cash. Money pox, the caption reads. Well, I'm not here to say, follow, tell you to follow the money or anything like that, but I can at least tell you that a policy that might support something like that is no longer in force, effect, or operation, at least not on Twitter. One more thing. If you like what you're about to hear, you can like this video. You can also check the, uh, click the bell icon to get a notice every time I come out with a new one. In fact, do you see the new icon, the heart shape with the U.S. dollar sign in it? That's a super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click that and leave me a tip. Any currency will do, so long as it's legal tender. Now, some reportage became available early Tuesday morning, November 29th. CNN Business had an article out at 7.12 a.m. Eastern Time. Then, the Times of India came out with their report at 7.15 p.m. India Time, which corresponds to 8.45 a.m. Eastern Time. Now, India Standard Time, you see, is five hours ahead of Coordinated Universal Time, and then it has a half-hour offset you have to add. Eastern Standard Time, of course, is five hours behind UTC, with no offset. CNN Business took a gloom and doom tone, but the Times of India noted that the pandemic has been waning anyway. The two reports do have valuable information on the history of the enforcement of this particular Twitter rule. The policy operated between July 2020 and September 2022. Statistics on enforcement include 11,230 account suspensions, 11.72 million account challenges. They're probably strikes, and I'll explain what those are later. And almost 100,000 tweet removals. The U.S. Surgeon General cited this policy as a model for all social media platforms to follow. I've left a link in the description to his 22-page advisory on misinformation. But on Monday evening, users noticed an addendum to the policy page saying, and I quote, Effective November 23, 2022, Twitter is no longer enforcing the virus that shall remain nameless. Misleading information policy, close quote. Now, today, that policy page literally resolves to the overall Help Center page. Now, that can only mean that some administrator has deleted it. That quote I read to you comes from a separate link in the Twitter Transparency Center, and I've left that link in the description. I also have a link in the description to the archive of that policy for which I went to, drum roll please, the Wayback Machine. Yes, 
The Wayback Machine is the historian's friend, and I'll gladly promote them even though they don't pay me. The link is to their last known good snapshot taken November 26. So, what did the policy actually say? The Wayback Machine snapshot dates the most recent update of the policy at December of 2021. According to it, Twitter would hold the tweet in violation for presenting as fact a claim that the Trust and Safety Team deemed demonstrably false or misleading based on widely available authoritative sources and likely to impact public, public safety or cause serious harm. Any such tweet would incur a strike against the account, or two strikes if Trust and Safety deemed it so severely harmful that they had to remove it immediately. Strikes would incur the following actions. First strike, no action, just a warning. Two or three strikes get you a 12-hour account lock. Four, four strikes get you a seven-day lock, and after five or more, you draw a permanent suspension. Locks and suspensions were technically subject to an appeals process. Reliable statistics on the enforcement of this policy, other than what I quoted you earlier, are simply not available. But Stat News on November 1st found enforcement uneven. They cited an Oxford University study claiming to find misleading tweets that Twitter should have removed or labeled but didn't, and a Washington Post article alleging that Twitter locked the accounts of several medical professionals by mistake. And they weren't talking about alternative practitioners either. So, what did Twitter hold in violation? Well, Twitter only gave examples of violative content, thus clearly implying that false or misleading information meant whatever trust and safety said it meant any time they said it. So. Again, for example, they would never let you say masks cause hypoxia or bacterial pneumonia and or don't help you anyway, close quote. Nor promote unapproved treatments. Nor could you say vaccines will make you sick, spread the virus, or bring you greater harm than the virus itself. Nor the mRNA vaccines change your genes. Nor those who get the jab shed the virus to others nor could you make any claim that contradicted health authorities. But the policy held some content not in violation. For instance, they said they would never strike you for presenting a claim as a matter of opinion or as satire. You could even run a campaign against an official recommendation on grounds other than what Twitter deemed false or misleading statements. For example, if you said I oppose lockdowns on general principle, whether anybody thinks they work or not, that would be acceptable. But lockdowns never work would not be acceptable. A distinction without a, a distinction without a difference? Well, I've already told you in other videos about their selective application of their rule, at least before Elon took over. Moving on. Contradicting someone else's false or misleading statement would not land you a strike. Now, maybe those medical professionals who got struck for no reason actually got struck on this account. Now, here is a very interesting statement. Technically, Twitter promised not to strike you for giving a report of your own personal experience, but sharing someone else's experience might get you a strike or two. Hey, any of you out there got struck for sharing your own experience? Leave me a comment. I want to know about it. And last, public debate about the science and research on the virus was supposed to be protected. Again, whether trust and safety respected the protection is another matter. Now, before I talk about why that policy might have fallen, I want to shout out to a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come. And sponsor is OurSuperLines.com. Do you feel like you're working harder for your money just to get by? You are not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, and unexpected changes in life have left many families struggling over the past few years. Collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges. But 
If you're like me many years ago, you don't know where or how to start. Our Silver Lines helps by connecting you with thousands of members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals. Whether you just want to collect rare and unique coins or take advantage of the business opportunities this company provides, either way, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLines.com to learn how you can build a legacy for your future. Now, let's talk about how and why that policy might have gone down. The policy dates from December of 2021. Now, I believe the policy was obsolete even after that revision. Some authorities were expressing concern about myocarditis, that's inflammation of the muscle of the heart, after the mRNA, after people took the mRNA vaccine. As, as far back as last summer, they were expressing that concern. Now, I have links in the description to two YouTube videos discussing this, and I'm going to add these to the end screen, but there's more. The Food and Drug Administration added a warning about the side effects to package inserts for both preparations. They did this the day after Christmas last year, in the very month of the latest Twitter policy revision. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention posted a fact sheet about myocarditis after uh, taking the mRNA vaccines in September of 2022. And it includes a link to their ongoing study of myocarditis in such patients. I have links in the description to the FDA and CDC warnings, including the study I mentioned. Nevertheless, the algorithm ground on, and it looks as though at least one account got a strike against it, or at least they complained about it. I want to leave a link in the description to that particular account, and it's also the name of a recent documentary film. But now, the policy page is gone, and the transparency page link would seem to make that non-enforcement retro so, what does Elon Musk say? Actually, Elon Musk has always faulted quarantine policies. In a Tesla earnings call in April of 2020, he said this about lockdowns, quote, I would call it forcibly imprisoning people in their homes against all their constitutional rights, in my opinion, and breaking people's freedoms in ways that are horrible and wrong and not why people came to America or built this country. It's an outrage. Unquote Elon Musk, first generation American that he is. And he also has said that he's had the disease twice. Well, it doesn't seem to have slowed him down any. I have a link in the description to a September 2020 podcast interview with a Kara Swisher of the New York Times. In it, he said he wasn't going to take the jab. No, why not? Because he didn't consider himself at risk for serious harm from the virus. And he dismissed the narrative that following policy saves lives by saying, and I quote, everybody dies, close quote. Simple, direct, and to the point, whether you agree with it or not. Furthermore, he has followed that policy assiduously in his business. For example, he sued health authorities in Alameda County, California, back in 2020, over the operation of his Fremont assembly plant, and he won that lawsuit. So perhaps taking down the medical misinformation policy was part of Elon Musk's outrage against lockdowns or all the rest of it. Or perhaps he has read about that long-term FDA study and decided that the narrative needs a second look. Perhaps the algorithm putting a strike on that other account I mentioned made him decide this ends here and now. Or perhaps he wanted to stick a thumb into Apple's eye after they threatened him. Whatever made him do, uh, do what he did, Twitter no longer has a medical misinformation policy. Twitter becomes, as far as I can tell, the first social media platform to ditch a medical misinformation policy that it already had. Facebook still has one. So does YouTube. The rest apparently never had one. A Gab Social explicitly disavows anything like a misinformation policy on anything. Well, except for impersonation. I'll give you that. 
Now, I expect everyone to watch all the social media platforms to see whether anyone follows Twitter's lead or does the opposite. It's worth noting that Elon Musk has plans for Twitter to emulate Facebook with its capacity for longer posts and YouTube with its capacity to handle long, uh, larger and longer videos as uploadable resources. Now, the last time I checked, no other social media platform has said a word about the Twitter policy change. And almost no medical professionals have either, except Dr. Simone Gold, head of America's Frontline Doctors. I have a link in the description to her tweet, and you can just imagine her reaction. I mean, she's been against lockdowns and all the rest of it from the get-go. Reaction to her cybernetic cartwheel run about 50-50 pro and con. Time and events might settle the debate, or not. And what are those 11,230 suspended accounts? Well, the general amnesty should take care of the, most of those. And then the world will see what happens moving forward. Links in the description to the article, to the Surgeon General's advisory I told you about, to the Transparency Center link saying the policy was no longer in effect, to the Wayback Machine snapshot of the policy, to those two videos talking about myocarditis, the virus, and the poke, to the warnings and study from the FDA and the CDC, to that account that said they had a strike of some kind. I'm not sure that they still do. To Elon Musk's interview with Kara Swisher, to Dr. Simone Gold doing a Twitter cartwheel over the revocation, to my Declaration of Truth Twitter account, and to Conservative News and Views. I've also left links to the awesome CNAV store and to rsuperlives.com, as I also mentioned. You know already about how to like a video, turn on notifications, and leave a tip. On the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link to my channel, a link to my Twitter war playlist, and links to those two videos about myocarditis, the virus, and the poke. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.